Bonjour, you may not know me, but allow me to introduce myself. I. Jean-Pierre Delacroix Leclerc Roux. Known to the world simply à Pierre Delacroix, made my entrance into this world on the 25th day of March in the year 1831, amid the vibrant landscapes of Saint-Domingue, now christened Haiti. Born into a land fraught with the shackle of servitude, I emerged, a child of two worlds. My mother, the indomitable Marie Cessette de la Croix, carried with her the weight of her African lineage, transcending her role à mère slave. She became my father's favorite confidant, a woman of strength and wisdom who had weathered the hardship of slavery before the uprisings that ultimately led to Haiti's independence. My father, the noble Henri Jean-Pierre Leclerc Roux, a prosperous French nobleman, had settled in Saint-Domingue, seeking his fortune in the sugar trade, bestowing upon me the heritage of French aristocracy. Born into the clutches of bondage due to my mother's status, it was the resolute hand of my father that transported me to the shores of France. France at the age of 14 in the year 1845, setting in motion the course of my destiny. Recognizing my potential, my mother ensured a receiver d'un education surpassing that of most children, even those of privilege. Swiftly, I mastered French, English, Spanish, and even some Haitian Creole, revealing my gift for languages. Within the hallowed hall of French Academia, I am, and imbibed the knowledge that would be my sword and shield in the trials at Leoed. In 1847 at the tender age of 16, he stepped onto the stage of military life, a private, ascending its ranks with a swiftness that left many in a WE. He quickly evolved into a, a formidable cavalry officer in the French army, garnering the claim for my strategic brilliance, and unwavering courage on the battlefield. In the crucible of conflict, at 19 years old, I demonstrated tactical genius that shone most brightly. I led my cavalry with unyielding de determination, shifting the tide of battle in favor of the French force. From the harrowings, skirmishes in the rug deals of Haiti to the thunderou clashes on the European front, my presence was synonymous with unwavering resolve. By the time he turned 27, he was commandant an army of 53,000 valiant souls as a general in chief of the French army of the Alpes. The crowning jewel in my saga was the unlocking of the Treacheru Alpine Pass in the year 1859, a feat that would pave the way for the triumph of the Second Italian Campaign against the mighty Austrian Empire. The monikers of l'Épée Noire, the Black Sword, or la Jument des la Jument de Minuit, the Midnight Mar, bestowed upon me by Austrian adversary, and the Exaltati exaltation à l'Aigle des Alpes. The eagle of the Alp from the lips of my French compatriot, echoes through the ages. My contribution extended far beyond the European theater, I played a, a vital role in the audacious French expedition to the Levant. In 1861, recognizing the urgent call for justice and freedom across the Atlantic, he, at 30 years old, volunteered to join the Union Force in the American Civil War. I left behind my comfortable life in France, driven by an unwavering commitment to the cause of emancipation. In the crucible of American conflict, I hope to exhibit tactical brilliance and fearless leadership that will swiftly earn the respect of my comrades. My struggles, and challenge ahead, remain enduring symbol of courage, resilience, and the fight for justice. My legacy will inspire generations to strive for a more inclusive and equitable world. With deepest gratitude and undying fervor, Jean-Pierre de la Croix Leclerc Roux, General in Chief of the French Army of the Alpes, que Dieu ait pitié de mon âme, ainsi que des hommes qui se battent dans cette guerre civile. May God have mercy on my soul, as well as the men fighting this civil war. This is my story. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Season 2 of the Civil War. 1861-1865. Grand tactician, of course, in front of all of that. We are now here with our new guy, Jean-Pierre Delacroix Leclerc. Spelled that wrong. Le it's so much. Leclerc. You gotta get that. Leclerc. Leclerc. Jean-Pierre Delacroix Leclerc. 
Ru? I can't even pronounce this damn name. It's like so French. Like, I'm just trying to look. Oh, he was born on the 25th, March 1831. Okay, that's correct. Anyway, I'm definitely going to have to use a, uh, a text to speech to pronounce these French words that he's going to be saying in the letters he writes home to Francais, to his family. And uh, yeah, if you couldn't understand what he was reading in the beginning of this episode, I did say that it is down in the description. If you go down there and you could go back and you could hear him talk while you're reading along with what he's saying, because I was like, damn, that's a thick French accent. I can't even understand him. But man, isn't it so good? Like this episode opened up on, with a banger, though, for real. But anyway, let's I digress. Let's get into it. Which of the following best describes your background? And according to ChatGPT, it says I'm a professional officer from outside America and decided to offer my services when the Civil War had already begun. And that was the best choice, according to ChatGPT. And then as a non-American, how did you end up receiving an American officer's rank? And then according to ChatGPT, it says as I had previous military experience, as we saw from his lengthy opening letter uh, and the American volunteers were lacking discipline. I was soon offered to take command of a unit and properly trained it. And then the next question, which of the following breasts describes your motivation to fight in the Civil War? And then according to Jack GBT, it's like this one. He wants to protect the Constitution and the values that he believes in. And I was like, wait, that doesn't really kind of make sense. But then I guess he did come to America because he wants to believe in what the Constitution is actually offering because he's like okay france we have black people that's already free he's coming off the legacy of thomas dumas if you actually look him up he's a famous french general he had a statue but the nazis like melted down the statue when they came through haters but anyway so yeah that was a fame and he fought with napoleon and he made it to a general and he was black so france is super progressive and uh, Jean Pierre is seeing that America isn't as progressive, and he's here to help the Union fight to help that progression. Progressionalism is that even a word? I don't know. Anyway, which of the following best describes your motivation to fight in the Civil War? And that's that one we picked. Okay, which of the following best portrays your reaction? If during the war you were ordered to do something you thought controversial, and according to this, it says if during the war he was offered to do, if during the war he was off ordered to do something he thought was controversial he would have respectfully voiced his concerns to his uh, and so basically it's just a more dilemma one hoping they would retract the order he's a good guy kind of like marcus rest in peace to marcus man that 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 was a tough season one man like i changed some things up though for the ai and some other stuff and hopefully this guy will be more prestigious and rich so we can hurry up and rise through the ranks faster to like actually make decisions because Marcus if we look at it, he came from the background of a slave in season one he worked his way up he wasn't a, he like wasn't like for taking over a unit in battle and helping out this guy he's different he's like yo I'm gonna get shit done I'm from France this is how we do stuff over there okay or he will say I get shit done this is I am from France this is how we do stuff over there oh, oh, oh. but anyway how would you describe your relationship with religion according to chat GPT it says uh he had a complex relationship with religion while he was born into a world influenced by the religious practices of saint saint domingue saint domingue domingo domingue domingo I, I that's obviously a french word i can't really say that but it's in haiti uh which he like which likely had an impact on his upbringing his experiences as a military leader in various conflicts across europe and america may have exposed him to different religious perspectives and belief it's possible that his approach to religion with a sense of respect for its cultural and historical significance, but he may not have been strictly devout. Instead, he might have viewed religion as one of the many facets of human experience, uh, appreciating its role in shaping societies and providing solace to individuals. So he's not religious per se, but this looks like he follows the ethical, ethical norm set in society by religions. So I'm going to guess that one. I mean, according to ChatGPT, you know, we, we over here, we go by what ChatGPT says. All right. If insulting by the felon officer, how would you react? And according to this, he would, uh, I want to say he would abstain, but not, I guess he's a general, uh, military guy. He's a general in France. He would forgive them. I mean, I don't know if I would, but hey, that's what ChatGPT says. Which of the following passive activities do you enjoy the most? 
ChatGPT says he would sit by a creek watching and listening to the water flow because of I and I was like, why is this the best answer? And it says, um, uh, what it said, which of the following pastime does he do? And it says, given General Jean Pierre uh, adventurous spirit and background as a military leader, it's likely that he would find sitting by a creek watching and listening to water flow to be a pastime activity he enjoys most. The scenery and the contemplative activity would provide a contrast to the rigors of his military career allowing him a moment of tranquility and reflection amidst the chaos of conflict i guess that makes sense but i wouldn't have picked that but anyway uh how do you assume your best friends describe you to someone who does not know you of course this guy's a he's a general officer and a gentleman quit playing chat he already knew that too a well-liked person a good manners and taste fit in the social status of an officer and gentleman which of the following is most important for an officer commanding man into battle? ChatGPT says personal example he would choose. Which of the following virtues do you excel at more than others? ChatGPT says since he was a cav swordsmanship and horse riding, because he was a cav uh, officer in France. So obviously that one easy. If confronted with a disagreement among your with disagreement among your peers, which of the following reactions best describe you? ChatGPT says he will remain calm and defend his position because he's matured and a dignified officer. Which of the following do you enjoy most? ChatGPT says impressing the others with epic stories about his accomplishments. Of course he would. Of course. Which of the following descriptions for Americanism is most accurate in your opinion? ChatGPT says breaking shackles because he came to America obviously to fight against slavery and helped out that. Oh, that answers the next one. Which of the following here opinion is the main cause of this terrible ordeal, the Civil War? Slavery is what ChatGPT says he would pick. All right, which of the following best describes the goals you have for your military career? ChatGPT says he wants to become an important and influential general admired by all. Beautiful. Because he already seen the elephant. He's seen a lot of combat. And he's already seen the world. He's from France, of course, right? If comparing your military career with possible options, with other possible options, which of the following best describes its benefit? ChatGPT says uh, he gets to see the world, meet interesting people, and kill them if required. Which of the following legendary Americans of recent times you admire most? This one was interesting. I thought ChatGPT would have said George Washington, but it actually says John Brown, and I guess that kind of makes sense because equality for man, and he's all about that from France. And like America must be a whole new shocking experience for him. In your opinion, which of the following descriptions best fits the nature of contemporary warfare? Um, this one, it actually was this. It's all about maneuvering around the enemy flanks and to cut his lines of communication, essentially to win battles even before they start. That that makes sense. Tactical. Your unit is advancing in open terrain and comes under fire from a well covered position. The man refused to advance. What do you do? He would send skirmishers forward to engage the enemy while maneuvering the main body to a better position. That's if he was doing. He probably he had he was in control of fifty three thousand men. I'm pretty sure he had infantry, but his calf he would have definitely flanked them, outflanked them, because he started I think as a calf officer at nineteen, if I remember correctly, what the summary was. Um, a group of volunteers with overdue contracts refuse to fight when your unit is just about to join the battle. What would you do? It says he would keep them under guard and persecute them after the battle. What is the most important role for cavalry in modern warfare? And it definitely says scouting ahead and harassing the lines of communication. Communicate communication to your commander are lost and an overwhelming enemy force is moving your way. What do you do? See, I thought he would like prepare to fight because he's a general, but it actually says order your deputy to lead the battle while you personally ride to find your commander for his instructions. I was like, that sounds cowardly, but then not because if the if I was um reading it the way that um ChatGPT answered, let me see where it says. Uh, ah, here it is. It says, given General Jean Pierre's strategic brilliance and dedication to his mission, he would likely order a deputy to lead the battle while he personally rides to find his commander for instructions. This demonstrates his understanding of the importance and effectiveness and effective uh, communication and his willingness to take personal responsibility for ensuring the success of the overall battle plan. It also showcases his ability to adapt and make decisions in the face of advers adversary ad adversity. Jeez Louise, man, it's late. Anyway, so we saw what he did. He ordered his deputy. 
interesting interesting uh take from chat gpt on that one uh you were ordered to hold the line but in front of you there's even better ground what do you do and it says he will send his skirmishers inspect the terrain and relocate you are advancing to flank an enemy position but the men are dead tired what do you do and it definitely says quickly he will uh consult with his subordinates uh which of the following qualities is most important of officer it said personal example which of the following qualities in the army is most important in winning wars it said unity of command which of the following technical principles is most important in your opinion and then it says prudent maneuvering consolidating lines of communication and logistic notes before advancing forward dude smart man this is definitely different than marcus marcus didn't have these same answers uh this is the final question and you will be soon and you soon be in combat if you could do only one of the following before marching out which would it be and of course chat gpt says i would gather the men and say some inspirational words to motivate them we have a mission to accomplish and let's see where we go from here boys the questionnaire has been finished okay so apparently there were different type of names for them so we're going to give them the name instead of first brigade it's going to be um first zuwal or something like that right because some according to this like they were named differently after their leader so so z o u a v e first zuwal i'm gonna just name them like that so i can remember them that way they're the first and this is going to be the second z o u a v e I want to make Z O U A V E. Yes, first zoo off, second zoo off, and then uh, I, what do I want to name my cavalry? First zoo off, second zoo off, first, first calf. I don't even think they could get that trait, but they're gonna be caught this first calf zoo off. And then it's going to be second calf, calf zoo off. C O U A V E. I'm just making up shit right now. So, yeah, don't quote me on this. But, yeah, so this is going to be it right here. We're going to have to zoo off brigade right here. Third division. Third division. Now we're going to be called the De La Crux. I'm going to just say something like I said. Pierre. Pierre's division. I'm gonna just call it Pierre's division. Something simple. <laughs> Alright, this is Pierre's division. Let's go. And we got how many men? 7,000. So we lost some, but it's fine. We got actually what I wanted. It, they look pretty strong. We still got 5,000 prestige. We got, uh, let me make sure we got everything we need before I do what I want to do. Yep. We got the drip. I'm not feeling these pants right now, though. I think I want the darker ones. Like these. But they want 50. These were 150. I mean, they're the same. You know what? I'm aware it because it's uniform with what's going on with everybody else. So we're going to do that. Headquarters, we got everybody we need here. Actions, we got stuff coming up. We still got money to blow. We got 5,000 prestige. Which we probably gonna earn more in battle. Um, we're we're heroic, we're unflinching, we're radical, and we're only a brigadier general. Which they hoeing my boy. He's a general. He gonna be major general. There we go. Say less. So let's wait until that promotion comes through. All right. I also want us to show like we got the big map this time, so we got a lot of room to do some. What is down here? There's stuff down here. That's crazy. All right, where are we at? Give me a Northeast Virginia. All right, so we are now trying. Oh, we're moving. We're trying to wait for our promotion to go through to become a major general because that will be more in lines of role play aspect of um, Jean Pierre because he was a obviously a general in the uh, French army. So once that comes through, I think that will do it for this episode. Pierre's division. P.S. Division is marching south. For there we go, baby. You're in command of a HQ, which can have multiple infantry, cavalry, and artillery units attached to it. Let's go, Jean Pierre. Recruitment crisis. CSA unable to 
fill the ranks of Congress and an emergency made new laws being drafted. Jean Pierre is marching southward. No, we not. We stopped in Washington. We have stopped in Washington. Lately, I was given command of the, the division, a fine unit, especially now with me commanding it. I can't really do a French accent, but I'm trying. It looks like we are marching down to meet the uh, Army of the Potomac. But I, I know we're not. We are going to Richmond, Virginia. Damn, we going right off for the Hail Mary from the first play? We going right? We trying to end this war today? Oh, shit. Army of Potomac. Oh, it's about to fucking go down, boys. But you're going to have to catch it in the next episode. The hype is real. We are back, baby. Season 2 starting off with a bang. We got my boy Jean-Pierre, Major General. You feel me? Ugh. But I'm sorry, bro. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Later.